Hello, and welcome back to Debate Clash. In this video, we're going to be going over the March 2017 public forum debate topic, which is Resolved, the United States should no longer pressure Israel to work toward a two-state solution. Now, before we jump into all of the arguments, we first wanted to say thank you to all of our subscribers. We're almost at 1,500. It's fantastic. If you're not one of them, click the subscribe button, hit the like if you actually liked the video. That would be cool. Even if you didn't, you, you can press it. Um, other things is we also sell debate evidence from debate doctors, from PF Debate, from Champion Briefs. Uh, you can visit our shop at debateclash.com forward slash market uh, and that would really help us out. Also mention that to your coaches. Yeah, if they don't know. Um, and then final thing is we have our Debate Clash research engine, which we'd love if more people would start using. Uh, we personally use it to look up all of this topic analysis uh, and generate our idea, ideas from it. Essentially, it just goes through and filters all sources that are legitimate. So you'll get BBC, New York Times, magazines, newspapers, government sites, educational sites. It's really fantastic. And you can go to debateclash.com forward slash researchengine.html if you want to go to that. Um, but anyways, let's jump into the overview of the topic. Yeah, so we're going to go over some of the um, so the situation that's going on between Israel and Palestine. Um, we will give you a brief overview before we do. Um, I did want to say that this is a really complicated situation, and definitely go research it for yourselves to really get a handle on what's going on. Um, one article we found really useful, so if you go to the, deba uh, the debate excuse me, the Debate Clash Research Engine, um, and then type in Israel Two-State Solution, the very first thing that pops up is an article from New York Times that explains the situation really well. We really liked um, how it explained that. Exactly. And jumping into actually what this conflict is. Um, so the two-state solution that the resolution talks about is discussing between Israel and Palestine, uh, right? These are two groups of individuals that have completely different ideologies that are very strongly religious-based ideologies. Uh, and essentially, they have not been getting along for a very, very, very long time. So the United States, the United Nations, many countries have said, you know what? You don't get along. Maybe you should should separate into two different countries or two different states. So that's what the resolution is talking about. It's much like the United States when we had our civil war and you had the North and the South that disagreed very politically. Um, imagine that an ideological battle. And if the solution was, well, the North becomes their own country and the South becomes their own country. Exactly. Um, now, this two-state solution was designed to fix this problem um, mainly for the for two main reasons that they both share holy land, um, or the two main reasons for the conflict is they both share holy land, um, and so there's constantly fighting over who should get the holy land. Um, now, the other reason is because another another reason with the solution why it hasn't been implemented yet is because. Um, they don't know exactly where to draw the line because they share holy land they can't just like split some sacred location in half and say you get half and we get half like it just doesn't it, I mean it doesn't make sense so the re part of the reason why this has gone on for so long is that they can't agree on some of these things that are like major points in creating two nations. Absolutely. Uh, and before we jump into the affirmative arguments, which this video goes over, I first wanted to just say that this topic is going to be very oriented towards your links. So the affirmative and negative are probably going to be providing similar or the same impacts. For example, um, the affirmative will say, hey, you know what? If we keep putting pressure on Israel to separate into two different states, this is going to solve the Israel-Palestine conflict. Whereas the negative is then going to read their case and say, hey, you know what? We can solve the Israel-Palestine conflict if we would just halt pressure. So remember that the impacts are going to be very similar. So do a lot of work on your links. Exactly. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to our three categories here on the affirmative side. Um, so our first category is going to be two-state solution. The two-state solution will not work. The second one is going to be the two-state solution. Um, the pressure on the two for the two-state solution, excuse me, um, is going to cause more problems. And then lastly, we're going to have our workaround section where we're going to talk about things you may come that may come up in the round or frameworks that you might be able to run. Um, so now going on to this first section here, the two-state solution will not work. Um, our first point is going to be that uh, neither side is willing to negotiate or give up concessions. Now this comes back to um, having similar holy sites. Um, both 
um, both of them wanting the same land. Um, so neither one of them really want to give up and let the other side win and take these really important things from them. The next argument that you can bring up, which we've kind of hit pretty hard now, uh, it's important to remember, which is that there are overlapping holy sites. So just like Michael mentioned in the overview, how they're not going to be agreeing on who gets which holy site, you can argue that the two-state solution will never work because they can never come to a consensus as to who gets these holy sites. Exactly. Um, and the next point we have here is that there's been too much violence in the past. Um, people aren't just going to forget about it and move on and be fine with these two nations. There's still always going to be conflict between them, whether they're two nations or one nation. It, it really doesn't matter. There's always going to be conflict. So separating out into two nations isn't really going to solve any problem. Absolutely. And, and the next argument following that is that the Palestinians um, don't necessarily want a two-state solution. And you're going to find very conflicting and like evidence online saying, hey, the Palestinians do want it, or they don't, or Israel wants it, or they don't. But one thing that's important to remember is that the Palestinians uh, have a group in the Gaza Strip, and essentially what's happening is they continually attack Israel. They do not let up. They do not respect Israel, and they do not want to cooperate with them. So you can make this a point, which is that certain groups of Palestin Pal Palestinians uh, will not cooperate and will never come to a consensus. Therefore, the two state solution isn't feasible. Exactly. Um, now, another point here, we're just going to touch on it briefly. If you really want to use this point, I definitely recommend looking into the history of the conflict to be able to really argue this effectively. But essentially, both the religious groups um, are in direct, um, excuse me, what was, uh, direct confrontation with each other. Um, so go ahead and look into the history of the conflict um, and you'll find some, um, some pretty, pretty good evidence to back that up. Perfect. And the next argument that you can run as well is that you have to realize what is advocating for this pressure. So in the past, we've had, you know, John Kerry and Obama essentially trying to bridge the ties between these two countries and actually making some progress. But recently, uh, President Donald Trump just got put in. So regardless of your political views, the globe does not like Donald Trump as much as Obama. So if Obama and John Kerry could not tie these two nations together and have them come to a consensus on this two-state solution, then Trump doesn't have a chance. Therefore, the United States should stop the pressure. Exactly. And then the last point of what we wanted to bring up under this section was that currently the Israel continues to settle more of the West Bank territory. Now, if you're not familiar with the geography, the West Bank territory is essentially <coughs> the largest um, area that the Palis that Palestine currently um, live has control of, I guess. Um, and um, Israel continues to build homes to settle that area and further encroach on the space. Basically, this means the two-state solution isn't going to work because there's eventually no longer going to be any territory to give Palestine to be part of its nation. Yep. And, and the next, let's just jump into the next category, which is that the two-state solution, uh, the pressure from it causes more problems than, it worth, than it's worth. Now, the first argument under this category uh, is that we are encouraging Israel to do something that they don't necessarily want to do and is not necessarily possible. As we discussed in the past category, it's very hard to even implement the two-state system. So we need to stop pestering them like a naggy spouse and actually if we want to build stronger relations, let them make their own decisions. Exactly. Um, kind of along these same lines, um, as, it, as we decrease the pressure to implement this two-state solution, what we're going to see is actually a decrease in violence as well. In any situation, I mean, I'm sure you've experienced this before, when someone's putting a lot of pressure on you to do something, you're more likely to get emotionally in invested and emotionally upset, um, whether that's you know, happy or angry or, or whatever, but you're more likely to have those emotional responses. So in this situation where we're constantly putting pressure on Israel and they are therefore constantly putting on pa pressure on Palestine to come to this resolution, it's just gonna cause more conflict as they continue to disagree. Absolutely, the United States is encouraging more bold, irrational decisions from Israel. Exactly. And it's causing lives to be lost. Uh, now the next argument that you can make under this category is the prejudice and xenophobia that exists. So one thing that you have to realize is when the United States pressures Israel into this two state system, what they are essentially saying is, you two, because you have different ideologies, 
you two need to be separated by country. Now, because the United States is kind of taking Israel's side on this, you have to realize the moral implications, which is that the United States is essentially degrading or demeaning Palestine because of their ideology. So if you wanted to take this from a moral or philosophical stance, you can argue the prejudice that exists from the United States placing pressure on these two. Exactly. Now, our last point under this section, uh, we wanted to touch a little bit on the U.S. global relations. So, um, obviously, as you know, a lot of the world sees the U.S. as kind of the global police. They're constantly sticking their noses where they don't belong. We're constantly getting involved in all these different places with these situations that we really shouldn't. And what us stopping this pressure on Israel would do is show the world that we're not always wanting to involve ourselves. Yes, we've been involved in a long time, but that doesn't mean we can't, you know, kind of step back and say, you can solve this problem by yourselves. You don't need us constantly pushing you for our own agenda. Um, and so that will just help our global relations as people maybe come to see that the U.S. isn't so pushy as we always have been. Absolutely. Um, and finally, going into our last category, which is the workarounds. Uh, now, the first workaround that you can show is that this has been trying to be implemented for so long. This two-state system has been pushed so many times that maybe we should look to an alternative. So one of the alternatives that we thought up uh, is that it maybe shouldn't be the United States pressuring Israel and Palestine to develop a two-party system, but maybe it should be an NGO or non-government organization such as the United Nations or NATO or even just a multilateral effort from a variety of countries uh, to push towards it if they really wanted it. Um, other alternatives that you could develop is say instead of this two-party system which is quite horrible instead of separating we need to all learn to grow and work together uh, or even maybe provide humanitarian aid towards the Palestines which are really struggling. So there's a lot of alternatives that you can develop. All right, for a framework that we wanted to bring up here, if there is an alternative that's better than the two-state system, then the AF should win the round. Yeah, and to provide a warrant to this framework uh, to support all of these alternatives, uh, what you can say is that if the two-state system is gone, if it's not a solution anymore and everyone stops accepting it, the United States stops pressuring them, then this will develop other ideas. Everyone will start brainstorming and coming up with different solutions to the problem. And then you can bring up all your alternatives and say, hey, these things are going to arise if the two-party system is no longer pushed. This, this, and this. All of them are better. Therefore, the United States should halt pressure. Okay, so for this next point, we want to bring up an observation that may come up, or that you could use in the round. Um, because of the wording of the framework, what you can do is, as the affirmative, you can still advocate for the two-state solution. You can still say that that is the best solution. The way you still um, go along with the resolution is you say the United States should no longer put pressure towards the two-state solution. Um, that what this allows you to do is it allows you to gain all the benefits of the negative side as because they're probably going to be saying, yeah, two-state solution, that's the best. We should keep pushing for it. What you can say is, yeah, it is the best, but the United States should stop putting pressure on it because of X, Y, and Z. And if you build your case around this, it's going to really throw off the negative. Um, it also gives you a lot of their benefits that they're going to be building up in their case. Um, again, this is a fine line to be walking because it could easily go that, oh yeah, they're saying the two-state system is good, they're agreeing with the negative, when really it's the negative that's agreeing with you. Um, make sure you, if you run this, you're really pushing. The United States is not putting pressure towards it, and therefore, you're still agreeing with the resolution. That's right. Michael makes a great observation of how you're how you perceive the resolution, which is that you're not talking about the two-party system that's necessarily bad. You're talking about the United States putting pressure to develop a two-party system that's bad. And by two-party system, Nico means two-state solution. <laughs> we figured we had to throw that in yeah. there. <laughs> and the last and final argument that we have under this category uh, is another framework, which is it's always good to have a framework to push the burden on of your opponent. So what this framework would say is that that the negative has to prove two things. The first thing that they have to prove is that the pressure that the United States puts on Israel will push the two-party system through. And the second burden that they have to show is that once the United States pushes that through, that the two-party system is good as a whole and has benefits. So this is a great framework to run, uh, especially since it, it puts the burden on your opponent and puts you in a really good place to win. 
Exactly. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. If you did like the video, uh, drop us a like below and uh, subscribe also um, so you can continue to see our videos that we release every month for these topic analysis. And check out part two. Yes.